Judgment in the matter of the Advocate General for Scotland versus Romaine. Lord Sumption will hand down the judgment of the court. <coughs> British nationality is primarily acquired by birth in the United Kingdom. <coughs> However, ever since the Middle Ages, it has also been possible for people born abroad to claim British nationality by descent. To many people, it will come as a surprise to learn that until 1988, British nationality could only be transmitted by descent through the male line. A child born abroad to a British father was entitled to British nationality, provided that he or she was registered at a British consulate within a year. But a child born abroad to a British mother could not acquire British nationality by descent from her. This changed as a result of the British Nationality Act 1981. The new act, however, applied only to people born after the 1st of January 1983, and then only with effect from 1988. In 2002, Parliament decided to correct this ancient anomaly retrospectively. Under the Nationality, Immigration and Asylum Act of that year, it was provided that a person born before 1983 would be entitled to inherit British nationality from his or her mother as if the previous statute had always provided for nationality by descent from the mother on the same terms as from the father. The act was amended in 2009, but without changing its basic structure. One might have thought that that would settle the matter, but there was a snag. The problem was the condition that a child born abroad to a British father should be registered as a British national at a consulate within a year. Under the new act, a child was entitled to British nationality by descent through the mother on the same terms as through the father, i.e. provided that the birth was registered at a consulate within a year. Unfortunately, it was impossible to satisfy that condition because during the many years when nationality could only be acquired by descent through the male line, British consular officials were under a legal duty not to register the births of children with British uh, uh, mothers. Miss Shelley Romaine was caught out by this paradox. She was born in 1978 in the United States to a British mother and an American father. Shortly after her birth, her mother visited South Africa and contacted the British consulate in Johannesburg with a view to registering her daughter as a British subject. She was told, quite correctly, that this was not possible because the father was not British and it didn't matter that the mother was. When the law was retrospectively changed, Miss Romaine tried to take advantage of the change. She applied to the Home Office for British nationality. She said that she was the daughter of a British mother and that she was now entitled to British nationality on the same terms as if she had been the child of a British father. Her claim was rejected. The Home Office said that although the law now provided retrospectively for the acquisition of British nationality by descent from the mother, for those born before 1983, it was still a requirement that the birth should have been registered at a British consulate. That condition was not satisfied in her case because her father was not British. If the Home Office was right about this, the retrospective change in the law had no effect at all, except in cases where the child of a British mother had been registered at a British consulate by mistake. Miss Romaine applied for judicial review in the courts of Scotland. There were a few people registered by mistake, but it is difficult to imagine that Parliament can have intended to help just them. Something, she submitted, had clearly gone wrong. At first instance, she lost. But on appeal, the inner house held that she was entitled to succeed. The Lord Advocate now appeals to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court unanimously upholds the decision of the inner house. British nationality, uh, uh, sorry, of the inner house, that Miss Romaine was entitled to British nationality, uh, although it does so for somewhat different reasons. In the Supreme Court's view, Parliament must have intended that the registration condition should not apply to cases covered by the new retrospective provisions, otherwise they would be largely meaningless. The Lord Advocate's appeal will accordingly be dismissed.